All right. So yeah, we're gonna start with the normal stuff, um, some syllabus stuff. I'll introduce myself and then kind of get into the specifics of the course. Kind of out of practice switching between or dealing with Zoom and in person. So this might be a little awkward. All right, so let's pull this up. Oh. Forgot how much this slowed me down. Okay, cool. Um, those of you on Zoom, if you can't see something, please holler. I probably won't um, check the chat that often. <laughs> there we go. I'll try to remember to advance the slides. Okay, so this is um, obviously AMP one. Um, human AMP. We're talking about humans. So I wanted to do just a little background on me. You might not actually, you, know, you might not care and some of you already know me. So this might be a little um, repetitive, but just so you have an idea of where I'm coming from. Um, my contact info, email is usually best. So my name is Dr. McDaniel. Um, my office is right upstairs, 215. So upstairs and kind of on that side of this hall. So if you ever need to drop by, I have office hours listed on my syllabus. I'll show you where to find the syllabus and you find my office hours. And I'm there other times as well, um, but I'm definitely there during office hours unless I cancel them for some reason. Um, I got my PhD from Georgia, so go dogs tonight. Is anyone a dogs fan? Yeah, yeah. It's a big one against Alabama again, once again. <laughs> but they're gonna do it this time, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I do live in Athens, I live an hour away. so. Um, kind of keep that in mind if you're like, can you meet with me right now? I might not be around. Um, my background is not in, oh, sorry. There we go. Okay. My background is not in human AMP. My research that I did at Georgia was actually in wetland ecology. So um, I studied, and my PhD is in entomology. So I studied insects. Uh, throughout my career, I've kind of taught AMP because they always need AMP instructors. Um, but I like teaching AMP because I like learning about, I don't know, I care about my health and how my body works. I'm just curious about that in general, but my research is not at all in human AMP. If you're interested in ecology, I'm teaching ecology this semester and then I'll be teaching it two years like every other year, basically, um, if that's something of interest to you. Although if you're in human AMP, you're probably not all that interested in uh, wetland ecology, but I love being outside um, and just studying things that I think people don't think about quite as much. All right. I also have a family. So I have a two-year-old son, um, a tiny little dog, and a husband. So those, they take up some of my time. Um, I will get back to you within 24 hours. Typically, if you email me, that's my goal. Um, if I don't, just hang tight. I will get back to you, I promise. Um, I try to be really responsive. And I don't like to leave questions hanging. Okay, so that's me in a nutshell. Um, I think those are the main things. Yeah. The course, probably more important to you. <laughs> it is an intro into two different fields, anatomy and physiology. We'll kind of talk about the difference between those. They are often paired together. Some places will teach anatomy separately from physiology because it is a little bit different. We'll talk about the difference between those, but technically there are two different fields, but we're dealing only with humans. There are, I took an insect physiology course, which is, that makes me shudder still thinking about it. So there's physiology of other things as well, um, but human AMP is a big course at pretty much every university. So we're gonna continue your training as a scientist. Maybe you don't think of yourself as a scientist yet, but if you're going into anything dealing with human health, you're gonna be a scientist. So you wanna think as a scientist thinks, um, using evidence to back up uh, claims and hypotheses. We're gonna do some investigation and then communication is huge. And I think a lot of, um, 
courses don't necessarily focus on that, at least in the sciences, we focus on, you gotta know these facts, um, but we're gonna do a little project dealing with scientific communication as well. It's important to be able to talk about, especially if you're in the healthcare industry, you have to be able to talk to patients about their health and maybe what's wrong with them. Um, so being able to do that is a skill that you definitely build over time. And we'll start in here. And this is really challenging. So I say that about if you were in my general biology course, it's challenging. <laughs> this is kind of another level up. So we're in the 2000 level class now. There's a ton of material in here, a lot of terms that are going to sound really foreign and just a lot of material. So we're going to be moving pretty fast. Um, well, the first um, couple chapters will kind of be a review. So some chemistry of life, cell stuff. So hopefully that'll sound familiar. Then we'll get into um, some of the systems. So we'll talk about tissues and bones and muscles and learn about all of that stuff, how it's formed, and then what the different bones and muscles are. Um, so it is hard. It's hard. <laughs> That's all I have to say. So stay on top of things. I'll give you some basic tips about how to approach the course and how to stay on top of things. Um, but a lot of it is, since you're in college, up to you. Okay, so preparation for each class. Please stop me if you have any questions about this. I'm gonna go into the syllabus specifically in just a second, um, but always stop me. Um, I get tired of talking up here. So interrupt me, raise your hand ideally, but you can always interrupt me. Um, so preparation before each chapter that we go into except for these first couple i'm giving you a little bit of um a little bit of leeway before i ask you to turn in an outline so you're going to want to read an outline of the textbook chapter that doesn't mean you have to read every single word if you guys don't have the textbook yet definitely get it um it's big <laughs> And if you're going on to AMP2, it'll be the same textbook. So we use the same one in both of those courses. We're gonna cover the first half of it essentially, and then AMP2 does the second half. Um, I'll talk about the outline assignments, but it's really just an attempt to get you to look at the material. So the crazy words that I'm throwing at you don't sound totally foreign when I talk about them in class. So it's just kind of a first look at the material and then I'll go into it in detail. Um, so you're going to want to do that before we go get into each chapter and I'll show you the schedule so you know when to expect what. Uh, figure out what's confusing to you. That's not always the funnest thing to think about, but that's what's going to trip you up on the exam is what you don't understand, right? And then always look, I do everything. I try to do everything through Canvas. I send announcements through Canvas. I put the schedule on Canvas. I just think it's an easy way for everyone to have all of the information. I'll email you sometimes too outside of Canvas. Um, I don't know why I switch back and forth, but I do. But look at when the due dates, I think I've set all the due dates except for one of the projects on Canvas already. So they're already in there. You can put them in your calendar. They're on the Canvas calendar. Um, so hopefully that helps you stay on top of things. I had a, um, yes. I had, when I was looking at the um, outline and the, I, um, and I've seen another notification that says something about text. It looked like it correlates with this, the PowerPoints. Mm -hmm. So how would that work with this book? Because like it's a different edition in the um, oh the the the, um, the online text that I posted. Yes. Yeah. So the online text that I posted. Good question. Some people don't have their book yet, so I still want them to be able to do the outline. That's just a different text version. Because so if you already have your book, you can ignore that PDF. Okay, that I, I was just reading, I was just reading, I had already read chapter one. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I didn't want to like no. start my outline. No, it's fine. You can do the outline from either of those. I would say use your textbook if you already have it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Good question. So I'll talk about that in just a second. I'll show you all on Canvas. If you don't have your textbook yet, you can still do the outline that's due this Friday. All right. So take notes during class. Um, that varies how you want to do that. I post the PowerPoints before each class, at least 12 hours ahead of time. So it'll be up the night before. Um, you can take notes by hand. You can take notes on your computer. Uh, don't just type or write what I have on the slides because they're available to you. I know people end up doing that just to feel like they're doing something. Um, sometimes that can be helpful, but I will go through slides faster than you can write all of the information down. It's all there for you. So you can print out the slides ahead of time if you want. You can bring your computer in. I don't mind what you do. Um, but take some kind of notes. Um, I say this in every class, and it's really hard, I know, especially 
9 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but try to focus as much as possible. If you focus in here, that's less time that you have to spend outside of class. That's kind of how I think of it. I wasn't always great at that when I was taking classes either, but um, if you don't pay attention in here, then you have to go figure out what I said, you know, two days before the test or whatever, when you weren't paying attention. So not an ideal situation. So use this as like a 15 minute study session. I'm going to try to break up the lecture. It's heavy. It's a heavy lecture class just because there's so much material. I'll try to break it up every so often with some activities and stuff to see if you guys are kind of on track and learning what I want you to be learning. Um, definitely ask questions. Like I said, always ask questions. Um, if we get behind because you guys are asking too many questions, that's fine. I'm totally fine with that. Uh, if I ask questions, just, yeah, participate, answer, even if you're wrong. I know it feels uncomfortable to be wrong. I don't like it either, but the more you're wrong, the more you realize it doesn't really matter if you're wrong, especially in this case in a class. Okay. That's during class. Um, I don't need to take this out. Oh, yeah, outside of class, like after class, I guess. Review your notes, complete assignments. That kind of goes without saying. Reviewing your notes is going to help so you're not, again, the night before the test, looking back at all of these crazy Latinized words, thinking, what is this? <laughs> so try to review your notes, even if it's not after every class, maybe once a week, look through them. You don't even have to memorize them at that point. Just look back through them. So when the test comes around, you don't look back and think, we never talked about this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and there will be some, well, yeah, some assignments and handouts, not necessarily for a grade, um, but they'll be helpful in studying. So if I give you a handout, it's probably gonna be, there's gonna be something similar to that on the exam. That's the idea behind me giving you handouts. They're not just to waste your time. Okay. That's a lot of that I expect of you. What you can expect from me, I say this in every class. So if you've taken one of my classes before, you've probably heard this and hopefully you agree that I try to be really transparent. So I'll tell you, you know, kind of how the exams are set up, when assignments are due, um, objectives, you kind of know um, from the textbook what objectives you'll be expected to know. And all of the information that's on the exams will be from the PowerPoints. So there will be extra material in the book that you might end up outlining that won't be on the exam. I try to limit, I do limit the exams to what I go over in class. Um, because there is far more material in that textbook than we can ever cover. And I don't want you to think you have to know every single word in there. Um, fairness, mostly this comes down to usually the end of the semester when people are asking for another little bump for their grade to get to a B or to an A. Um, I, don't, I don't bump you up except in one, one instance, which I'll talk about. It has to do with attendance in the class. Um, so I'm fair across the board. Um, multiple uh, exams are multiple choice, so it's easy, pretty fair. And fairness comes back to I will only ask you questions about stuff that I've talked about in class. Nothing like that we didn't go over from the textbook. Timely communication I already mentioned. Um, I try to get back to you really quickly. Sometimes it'll be within like five minutes. Sometimes it might be more like 24 hours, depending on how busy I am. But you can always drop by my office and see if I'm there. Uh, my whole goal was, like I've, I've said in other classes, I don't just stand up here to talk about what I know about. I really want you guys to learn it. And I mean, I guess that's probably every professor's goal, but I want you guys to really, really learn it. So you re remember, even if you remember 50% of this material moving on, that's awesome because it's a ton of material. So I wanna help you learn the additional assignments that I have you do are to help with that. The outlines are to help with that. It's not just busy work to make you busier. Um, I'll respect your time. I'll respect um, any answers that you give. I'm not gonna judge you if you make a wrong, if you answer incorrectly, like I said before, I've, I answer incorrectly. Not often, but sometimes I say things that aren't correct and that's fine. You just have to kind of move on. So I'll respect you from that in all of those, in all of those cases. Um, I don't try to cram in more material. I don't give you additional videos to watch outside of class, maybe like a five minute one here and there, but even that I don't really do because you have 15 minutes here, three days a week, we're gonna use that time 
and I'm not going to ask you to spend tons of time outside of class other than studying and outlines. And it is challenging. So you can't expect a challenge in this class. It's tough. <clears throat> I don't think there's any AMP class that isn't difficult. We know a lot about the human body, which is awesome, but we know a lot about the human body. So there's a lot to learn. Okay. Um, on to the syllabus. I don't know if anyone actually reads the syllabus, but I want to go over some of the points. There's a lot of stuff in there that we just have to put in there for courses. It's always on Canvas. Um, the most important part probably is how you're graded and then the semester schedule. So I'm gonna show you kind of how I have Canvas set up so you can find what you need to find in there. All right, labs do start this week. That's a little bit weird. Usually we don't start labs the first week, but there's no labs next week because of um, Martin Luther King Day. So I teach labs on Tuesday and Wednesday. If you take a lab another day, then I'm not your instructor. Um, but they do start this week. So if you have lab scheduled today, you're going today. <laughs> and I think that's Mr. Eagle who's teaching today. Okay, so let's go to, you can go to Canvas if you want to right now. Um, for you guys on Zoom, I'm just gonna share, I'm not gonna share Canvas because it's gonna take a little bit too long to get through everything, but hopefully you can see what I have on the screen there. All right. Okay, so um, first off, oh yeah, student responsibility agreement. You guys did this last semester probably. Fill this out for this class and you'll get um, one bonus point on your first exam. So you have to fill it out by Friday. If you fill it out by Friday, you get a bonus point on your exam. You basically have to check a box and say you read something. So you can do it now, you can do it right after class. Just get that done. And I'll add that to your first exam. Uh, general course info, I might add more stuff here, but the course schedule, really important, and this Zoom link. So if you're ever out, if you have to quarantine, if you're sick, if for some reason you just can't be here and you want to join via Zoom, um, I'll talk about attendance in a second, but you can join via the Zoom link. It'll be the same one for the whole semester. So if you're like, I'm quarantining, I can't be in class, great join via Zoom. That's just kind of assumed, but also let me know you won't be here. Course schedule. I'll get this real quick. So I love, I, I function because, I function well because I'm really organized and this schedule is what I really try to stick to. Sometimes I have to bump some exams, things come up. If my son is sick and can't go to daycare, um, I may have to cancel a class and push stuff back a little bit, but Overall, I really try to stick to the schedule. You can see when the chapter outlines are due and which one is due in this um, chart. It's also in the assignment, so it should show up on your Canvas calendar. So you should hopefully have a notification that the chapter one outline is due, and I'll talk about that assignment in just a second. Um, so you can see what we're doing every day. Awesome. Spring break. Final, I even have on here time, date, everything. Hopefully that doesn't change. Okay. So you can always find that and I'll keep it updated if I change something. Or schedule. Um, this is where I'll put all of the PowerPoint. So unit one, we do, I think, three chapters. Um, so all the chapter PowerPoints will be here. This text here that you mentioned that I put up. Um, if you don't have the book yet, this is chapter one of a different textbook, but you can use this to do your chapter one outline. If you don't have your book yet, you can still do the chapter one outline and turn it in by Friday just using that. It's a little bit different than the textbook, but that's okay. Um, that'll only apply to chapter one. So definitely get your book by the time the next outline is due, which I can't remember right now, maybe next Friday. Okay. Questions about any of that so far? I know everyone sets up Canvas differently, so hopefully, hope, I tried to just make this the most obvious way to set up Canvas. All right, syllabus. You can download a PDF of the syllabus, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about that in a second, thank you. If I don't, remind me. Okay, we know where we're meeting, the course description. Here's all my info. So that's all on the syllabus. 
if you ever want to call me, which no one ever calls, um, I think I have gotten two calls since I've been here. Here's my office. Here's my office hours. Um, so every day but Friday, I have at least one office hour. Tuesday, I have a big chunk of time in the middle of the day. So I'll be here. Um, and if they don't work, then just email me. Um, if you want to meet on Zoom for office hours, that's fine. Meet on Zoom. I don't mind at all. Here's the info for the textbook if you haven't gotten it yet. If you get another edition, it's probably fine. Um, it will have basically the same info. Grading. So here's where all of your points come from. Exams. So I do it on a point basis. I'm not breaking it down based on um, percentages. So you can always figure out where, what kind of grade you have. I put everything in Canvas, so that should show up. But if for some reason you're trying to figure out what grade you need to make a certain grade in the course, it's really easy with points. So exams, total of 250 points. There'll be five exams. Each of them are worth 50 points. Chapter outlines. There's 15 outlines, which sounds like a lot, but I'll talk about how I want you to do them and hopefully they're not too overwhelming. They're each 10 points. So if you, yeah, I'll talk about the grading in just a second. Anyway, 150 points from chapter outlines. If you don't do your chapter outlines or you turn them in late, that can really hurt your grade. And they're relatively easy to get done. The exams are difficult. So don't expect to get an A on every exam. Um, so use your chapter outlines to kind of help bump your grade up some. The disease presentation I'll talk about later this week. Um, that's the kind of scientific communication part of the class that I have incorporated. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Total possible course points. You have 500 total points you can, you can get by the end of this semester. If you got 100% on everything, you'll have 500 points. 10 point grading scale. Exam policies, there's five exams. Like I said, the final is not cumulative. So I've changed that this year compared to previous semesters. Um, I just think it's a lot of information to study at the very end and you guys are already really stressed out at the end of a semester so the final exam is worth the same as every other exam it's just on new material um if you are registered for anything with disability support please talk to me um email me come meet with me and we can talk about um any accommodations that you have you can read through all this I don't like going through absolutely everything. It's, people tend to zone out. You do have to wear a face covering, obviously. So that's everywhere um, inside on campus. And I usually have some extra face masks if you don't have one for some reason, but don't depend on that. <laughs> I try to keep them in my office. All right, great. Questions about the syllabus, grading, exams, anything. Under assignments, you can find the chapter outline stuff. You guys see that okay? Um, so if you go to assignments, I have outline instructions and an example outline for you. Don't copy the example outline, it's for chapter one, but you can kind of use that um, as a springboard to figure out what you need to do for these. I have all of them listed in here already with their due dates, so you know when to expect them. Um, so you can download the example outline here. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, this is just a PDF of the assignment that I copied here. So for every chapter, you're going to outline. Yeah, you're going to outline every chapter in the textbook. That doesn't mean it has the chapters are long. Okay, it doesn't have to be a ten-page outline. Some people did ten-page outlines, and they did really well in the class. So how much effort you put into this kind of um, can make a difference in how well you do on the exams. I think you can do a pretty solid outline in two pages. So um, what did I say? Single space, two page, 12 point font with bullet points. It doesn't have to be like par paragraphs. Um, simple bullet points. I don't care about grammar. I don't care about punctuation. Um, ideally spelling the words correctly, that'll help you remember the material. You can do something other than, I usually do kind of a typical outline and I'll show you what I have here. If a concept map or something else works better for you, if you want to write kind of a two page summary paper i've had people do that. If you prefer sentence form or if that helps you a little bit more that's fine i'm kind of open to whatever you want to do if you want to handwrite it that's fine, you can take a picture and upload it. So I set it up so you can upload pictures you can upload documents 
it's kind of open ended. Um, most people end up doing sort of a typical outline. Uh, you can't use um, outside sources. So if you use some outline that's already online, um, I'll check it for plagiarism, uh, checking against those online for plagiarism. So make it your own. Um, just use the textbook. You don't have to use anything else. Yeah. So submit each outline by the due date on Canvas. So the due date on Canvas is before this class. So if it's due Friday, it's due Friday by 9 a.m. If it's late, I didn't talk about the late policy, but 25% is automatically deducted for anything that's late. So if it's 9.05 a.m., it's considered late. All right, each outline is worth 10 points, like I said. So generally, you'll get 10 points. If you put that effort in and make a two-page outline, I'll give you 10 points. If it's one page, you might get you know six or seven. You made an effort, but you didn't quite put the amount of effort in that I want. It's just kind of a sort of a sliding scale. But if you turn something in, you can get at least one point. But again, Build those points, use them and bank those points for when the test comes and maybe um, you don't do as well as you had hoped. Okay, so let's look at the outline here. This is from a student, I think from a year ago. Um, so pretty basic, There's there, the chapter is broken into sections. So overview, they didn't put every single thing in there, right? <laughs> they don't have, you don't have to put everything in there. Pick out what seems to stand out. Section one, two, structural organization. They went from bullet points to numbers. I don't care. It really doesn't matter. Um, so they did each section and fit it all in two pages. Again, if it goes over two pages, that's fine. I'm not saying it has to be only two pages, but that's kind of a goal around two pages. Questions about that? Okay. All right. I think that's all I wanted to go over on Canvas. Yeah. Any questions about syllabus? Basic, that's I think all I'm going to say about the course itself. I'll talk more about the exams when we get closer to one, but they're multiple choice. Um, typically 50 questions, one point per question. Okay, it's only 9.30, awesome. All right, oh, let's need to share that. Let's get into anatomy and physiology just a little bit, just some background here. So I said anatomy and physiology are sort of separate topics, right? Does anyone have an idea of what the difference would be? How are they different? Yes. Anatomy is structure and, physi and physiology is structure. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So anatomy, we'll be doing both of these in here, obviously. Um, anatomy is really about what we're made of, the structure of our skeleton, for example. So the study of form is to technically the correct the definition of anatomy. Um, so what what is it? What do we have? What muscles do we have? What bones do we have? What tissues and organs do we have? That doesn't really talk about what they do, right? I mean, we know both for us, but um, what an organ does would be the physiology side. So anatomy is Anatomy is really strongly or heavily dependent on memorization. If you're good at memorizing, you'll be really good at anatomy. <laughs> I used to be better at memorization. As I've gotten older, it's gotten a little tougher. Um, but if you're, if you're really good at memorizing, you'll be good at the anatomy side. If you're good at understanding sort of how things work together and functionality, um, then you'll be good at the physiology side. And maybe you're good at both. Some people are, a lot of people are really good at both of them, kind of putting them together. So physiology is how something functions. So how our skeleton functions, how our tissues function. Um, so tissues are a bunch of cells working together. What that 
combination of cells actually does would be the physiology, not just what the tissue is. Physiology is often more challenging, I would say, for a lot of people, because it really takes some deep thought. Memorization is, I mean, if you have some way to memorize things, you can memorize almost anything, right? Physiology takes a little more thought into how the structures, the anatomy basically allow for the function of that organ or that system. Muscle contraction we'll talk about. So you don't really think about your muscles contracting. They're contracting all the time. Um, it is a complicated process for how a muscle contracts. And we're going to look at it on the sub, on the cellular level, basically. So it's, or the tissue level, how a muscle actually contracts. We can't see it. It's really tiny. So sometimes it's hard to wrap your head around. Um, so yeah, that's the basic difference between anatomy and physiology. And we're going to do both of them. I would say AMP2 is more focused on physiology. People typically like AMP2 a little bit more. Um, even though it's physiology, it's a little bit tougher, but it's a little bit more uh, interesting and stimulating, I guess. Okay, so there'll be a lot of anatomy in here. So why take AMP? Yeah, I mean, you guys, there's probably a wide variety of potential careers in here, right? And the human health industry. Um, athletic trainers, nurses, doctors, what else? What else do people want to be? Those are my three. You Physician's physical assistant. Therapy. What? You said physical therapy. Physical therapy. My husband's a physical therapist. That's awesome. Yeah, physical therapy, PA. Um, even if you're in, I think, like medical coding or medical like business management, you have to take this class. So there's a wide array. And this is the base of everything. You have to understand how the body works, right? And what it is made of. A lot of this you'll see again in future courses. So this is an intro to AMP. Don't expect yourself to remember everything that you learn here, but when you go on to the next class, um, maybe like genetics or microbiology or something like that, You'll have this information and you'll be able to kind of pull from it. Even if you don't remember it perfectly, you'll at least have seen some words before. So it won't be totally new to you. All right, so this is kind of the basis for a lot of the different human health related careers. And because you have to take it, right? <laughs> That's why you're taking it because you have to. Oh yeah, and this is kind of where I'm interested um, in staying healthy for a long, long time. So it's good for your own health. I mean, learning how we're gonna talk about joints. If you don't use your joints, they kind of start to decay if you're really sedentary. Um, so you wanna keep using your joints, something like that, muscle contraction. You can, you can understand kind of how the nervous system innervates your muscles. Um, and then also diseases associated with a lot of these organ systems. So understanding AMP for, probably everyone could use a course in AMP about how to sort of care for your own health. That's not the main focus, but it'll kind of be a side, a little bonus on the side. All right. I don't know if your book breaks it down into three major themes. I know there's themes in your book, but these are the three themes that I really harp on and bring up over and over. Even if I don't mention them as a theme, you'll see these three themes throughout this course. Number one, structure determines function. Our hand is structured in such a way that we can grasp things, right? We have all these little bones in here so we can bend our fingers and do a lot of really fine scale manipulating. If our hands weren't structured that way, we couldn't do all of the things that we actually do. So structure determining function is a massive, huge theme that you'll see throughout AMP. How our muscles, our muscle tissues, like I said, for muscle contraction, they're structured in a really specific way. So our muscles contract in the same way every time. Homeostasis is gonna be our second major theme. This one will kind of be in the background. I'll talk about homeostasis here, um, well, probably on Wednesday. I don't know, we'll get into it today on Wednesday. Um, but most of our body systems, the whole goal of our body is to stay within certain ranges. 
temperature is the most obvious one, right? We want to stay right around 98.6. Sometimes we drop low or go above, but our body is constantly making adjustments to stay within a certain range of temperature or so your muscles don't overextend or your joints don't hyperextend. All of these homeostatic mechanisms, um, controlling blood sugar levels, all of that, your body, you may not realize it is constantly sort of doing these little minor adjustments to keep within a certain range. And then the third major theme should look kind of familiar. Um, we talked to, talk about this in uh, 1101 biology, but there are levels of human, well, any organism, but in our case, human, structure and complexity. So you can break us all the way down to atoms. So atoms of carbon or hydrogen. And then you can build us all the way up to a full functioning organism. And all of that in between is kind of what we're talking about um, in AMP. So I'll talk about that in more detail, but we'll be talking about the cellular level, we'll be talking about tissue, and we'll be talking about the organ level. Um, and then sort of how that affects the overall organism. So you'll see these different levels as we get into the future chapters. Like I said, we're going to do some review on cells, um, cells and chemistry. Those are pretty critical. Yeah, let's do... We'll just get into, I think I kind of already explained this pretty well, but structure determining function. I'm going to go into a little more detail on these three, um, these three themes that I just mentioned. Structure determining function is one that's going to come up over and over. If our part were structured in a different way, it wouldn't work as it does, right? Maybe it would still work, but we'd have a totally different heart physiology if we had a different heart anatomy. So we're combining our anatomy and physiology. I talked about the hand already. We can grasp things because our hand is designed in a very specific way. It has the right muscles, the right bones, so we can grasp stuff and manipulate it. Our heart pumps blood in a specific pattern. It goes in one side, out the other side. Our mouth, in order to ingest water or food, we have to have an opening, right? If we don't have an opening, we can't ingest food. As simple as that sounds, that's exactly the idea behind structure and function, structure determining function. And that'll come up over and over again. Oh, sorry guys, I didn't advance that. There's not a whole lot on the slide. I think it's up there today. Homeostasis gets a little involved. So we'll do that on Wednesday. Any questions before we head out? All right. I'll see you all Wednesday or tomorrow if you're in my Tuesday lab. <laughs>